All right, so let's pick up where we left off, going over uh, the most common symbols. So I, I want to continue to go over these um, so that we can, you know, continue to learn the, the formula of the language, you know, continue to learn the foundation of the language, the structure of the language, how this language is built, how, how it operates. You know, just like, you know, you, you take English class almost every year of school to really better understand the English language. So uh, uh, if, as, as a reminder again, I'm um, sure we're all well aware of it by now, you know, everything in your dream is an aspect of your own consciousness. So your dreams are about you. So like this first one, phone, represents communication. So it's about commun how you communicate with yourself. You know, the thoughts that you're having about yourself, the emotions that you have about yourself, the way you feel about yourself, the way you think about yourself. You know, when a phone comes up, that's what it's going to be talking about. Um, and so when you, when you look at, <clears throat> sort of backtrack, about uh, every dream being about you, the person dreaming. You know, when you when you look at these symbols, you want you want to look at the form, and then look at how that form functions in life, and then how does that relate to your consciousness? You know, how does that relate to you in your mind? So again, with the phone, that's the form. Its function, the function of the phone, is to communicate. You know, and so. How that relates to the mind, so like I said, how you communicate with yourself, the thoughts you have by yourself, the emotions you have by yourself. Now, phones that we have today are <laughs> are for far more than just communicating, um, you know, especially just talking. You know, there's also texting, email, all types of forms of communication, but also entertainment devices, calculating devices, uh, navigational devices. I mean, there's, there's it's endless. Um, so if you're if you're using the phone, you know, still with like email or text or anything like that, then it's still going to be about communication. Um, if you're using it like kind of like a computer for any of those other things, then it's going to be about, um, you know, how you, how you program, you know, the programs within your, within your mind. Because we all, you know, have different types of programming uh, within our own mind. Uh, the, you know, the, the mind is by design. Uh, it's designed to be programmed. So, you know, the, the stronger the thoughts and beliefs that you have the, the will determine what programs are operating and running. So, um, you know, a lot of our programming was uh, installed as children because that's when we're the most impressionable. Our consciousness is in a state um, by design to absorb uh, information and experiences um, in, order to, in order to create these programs. That will that are designed to operate, you know, for us throughout the rest of our life. And no childhood experience is is more programmable and more at the root of nearly all of our the rest of our experiences than the birth. So, um, in addition to just this dream interpretation here, one thing that I would suggest for everyone who's um, you know listening now or listening on the recording do is for the over the next week. Spend the first half of the week just writing down all of the conditions of your birth. Um, you know, the city you were born in, the state you were born in, the time period you were born in, the country you were born in, what was going on, what was the, you know, political uh, landscape of that time, what was the economic landscape of that time, um, the parents you were born into, the immediate family you were born into, the lifestyle you were born into, the zodiac sign. You were born with, um, you know, write down the the gender you were born for, the name you were given. Just write down anything and everything that could be associated with your birth, and and then, so that's what you're going to do for the first week. Is just or for the first you know day or two, just really try to think about it. if if you know you have a good relationship with your parents, you know, call them up and ask them. You know, I call. I I did this at one time, and I called my mom and asked her, just you know, hey, what was going on when I was born? What was going on in your life when I was born? And I, oh my God, my it, it was eye opening stuff that I would have had no clue about. Uh, and some things I did know about, but you know, it's 
very eye-opening as well. They helped me with a lot as well. But um, do that. And then after you've kind of collected all of the data, then just, you know, maybe give it a rest for a day. Don't really think about it. Don't, don't address it. And then come back to it and come back to it from a more objective view, being more of an observer, not so like, you know, this is me, you know, don't be so attached to it and just, and just look at it from a much higher, you know, a detached perspective. And from that perspective, think about you as a soul. You as a soul who has lived, you know, hundreds of lifetimes and you're getting ready for your next lifetime, you know, that's just going to be one of many more. <laughs> so it's not really that big of a deal, you know. Uh, and and how would that soul view these circumstances, these conditions? Why would that soul choose a life with all of these conditions? I mean, this is a very powerful um, exercise for self-awareness and for and for growth and self-acceptance, self-worth. At least those were a lot of, you know, self-acceptance, self-worth were a lot of things that it did for me. Um, and a few other people that I, I know of who have done it. Um, yeah, so so and just and just think about it, you know, write about it, journal about it. Um, you know, you don't have to come back here or come back to me with it or anything. Just uh, just an experience to have for yourself. So I suggest that um, it isn't necessarily on the topic of dreams, but it is associated with it as that's a soul experience and will help you and will help you deepen your own self-awareness. All right, because as we are learning with our dreams, we are more than just our body. You know, our dreams give us indication of that, especially when you become lucid in a dream and have lucid dreams, then you're really uh, having a way that you're experiencing yourself beyond your body. So you're more than just the body. So you know, being so fully attached to the body um, is part of why they, you know, our experiences seem so extreme. Um, so this also helped with that. 